In Module 1, we looked at the drivers of demographic change, fertility, mortality and migration. In Module 2, we're going to move forward to look at some of the implications of these changes. And you're going to be offered three essay titles to choose from. One is going to look at population change in the labour market. One is going to look at social security provision. And the third is going to cover issues around health. And in all cases, you have the opportunity to write on emerging and least developed economies and the advanced economies. So focusing, first of all, on the emerging economies. Here, if you remember, we're going to have a large percentage of population of youth or of working age. Some authors describe this as a demographic dividend, or in other words, a large percentage of population who potentially are available to drive the economies. And they argue that having a bulge in working ages will be accompanied by the potential for high saving rates particularly as the consumption needs of large numbers of dependent children are going to be reduced because of falling fertility. And this will enable families to concentrate their resources on fewer children, with a higher survival probability, increasing the expected return to their investments. And this will lead to greater per capita output and economic growth through an enhanced labour force and in high investment rates, producing the so-called demographic dividend. So the true definition of a demographic dividend is the tendency for economic growth to be spurred by the rapid growth of the working age share of the population. It's suggested, for example, that as much of one third of the considerable economic growth that we saw in East Asia between 1965 and 1990 may be accounted for by changes in the age structure, which were associated by the region's rapid move through demographic transition. But we must be careful. There are two potential fallacies here. Economic growth such as that experienced in East Asia, however, is not necessarily an outcome of increases in the working age population. And secondly, the large numbers of young people may not in themselves create a demographic dividend. Economic, governance and institutional contexts need to be advantageous as well. So good economic management, efficient financial and labour markets supported through strong governance and institutional structures and a population which is benefiting from an investment in health and education will be conducive to creating a demographic dividend. It does not necessarily mean, however, that a population in which there is a large percentage of young people, say between the ages of 15 and 24, some people call this a youth bulge, are necessarily going to create a demographic dividend as they enter the labour market. For example, the Middle East and North Africa are currently facing a youth bulge, and some Asian countries such as India and Pakistan. And so they are facing the question as how their governments can ensure that this youth bulge will contribute to demographic growth. In other words, move from a youth bulge into a demographic dividend, and not to civil unrest. Because other authors argue a large number of young people may lead to a drive in productivity if the economic structures and institutions are in place. But if population growth exceeds economic growth or occurs at a time when countries are still in the very early stages of economic development and do not have the institutional and employment structures in place, then such bulges, instead of forming a demographic dividend, lead to high youth unemployment and poverty. And that can lead to civil conflict. So the main challenges that are occurring at the moment in the emerging economies are around the question of youth. Will it be a demographic dividend and lead to tremendous growth opportunities? Or will it be a youth bulge and potentially lead to civil unrest? But what about what is happening in advanced economies? Here, as we've discussed, we have the ageing of the populations. Older people are living longer and at the same time younger people are having few children. And this shift from predominantly young to predominantly older populations is raising concerns over the ability of nations to finance social security and long-term health and social care. This is required to support the growing number and percentage of older dependents at a time when the number and percentage of those who are economically active are declining. There are also concerns about the ability to reconfigure health and long-term care provision. Now, these challenges have been brought into sharper focus since the financial crisis of 2008. 
In particular, growing national debt has drawn government attention to two apparently conflicting priorities. On the one hand, there is a need to sustain public spending on pensions and health care, but on the other, there is a real need to reduce budget deficits. And a number of countries are consequently reconsidering health and pension care provision, which accounts for up to 40% of all government spending in advanced economies. So it's against this demographic context and the way it's playing out in advanced and emerging economies that you should consider addressing one of the three essay questions, either on labour markets, social security or health and social care provision.